So now we've got this open. This is the XO laptop. See? XO. It's the little XO man. Also known as the OLPC, or One Laptop Per Child. I wanted to show it to you like this because you can see how little it is and how I can just throw it around because it's got a flash drive in it, that sort of thing. Uh, very, very light. I don't know. It's three and a half pounds, something like that. And I don't want to go into all the specs because you can read them online what the processor is. 433 megahertz. Very slow. But anyway, uh, go read up on it. I did want to show you a couple things on the outside. These are the antennas right here, so cut in tight there. And you can see that the antennas have a couple of purposes. One is they cover up the ports. So you've got two USB ports on that side. And on this side you've got another USB port and an audio in jack and a, uh, and a headphone jack. Uh, these also act as the actual latches that keep it from flip, uh, falling open. So once you get that like that, it pops open like this. And I want to zoom in on a couple of things here. Something very, very interesting. You'll notice these little buttons here, those look a lot like a Nintendo game controller. And over on the left, we have the left, right, up, down controller. So I think what you're supposed to do, there's a lot of games on this, is you're actually going to, which way does it rotate? Ah, there we go. When you want to play a game, you would pop it together like that, and you can hold it and play a game. But I don't know how to play games. I'm all serious all the time. I don't want to play games, so we're going to pop it around here, and I'm going to show you some other things. So I want to focus down in here on there's four control buttons here that do a lot. These turn out to be important. When I push this first one, this is the network neighborhood, and what each one of these are are wireless access points in my neighborhood. That happens to be mine and the one we're actually connected to. Some of these are very strange. This one says something about parent something, and some of these are locked, you can see on there. So I'm actually on the wireless access point in my house, but it does not support WPA, only WEP. Unfortunate, so I have to keep turning it on and off. So uh, let's see, the second button, this three, these three dots, I have no idea what that button's for. I guess it's if you want to go look at the little XO man. This button here with the single dot is really important. What you're going to find in here is these are the applications that I have open right now. I've got a PDF file open. I've got a web browser open. And you always have this strange little journal open that's actually keeping track of what you're doing. Then across the bottom, we've got all the applications that we can have access to. And this list goes quite a ways. In fact, there's a second screen of those. So let's take a look at the web browsing with the XO laptop. I've already got the web browser open. I'm going to click on it. And you can see on, I'm on Google's homepage, which has something very strange. Looks like a guy shooting off a cannon. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to try to type in podfeet.com, and we'll see. It'll be a miracle if I can type it on this teeny little keyboard. P-O... Wait, did it do it? Messed up. There it is. D-F-E-E-T dot C-O-M. And we'll see how long that takes to come up. Does it do anything? There we go. And you can see we're at the No Silicast Podcast, a technology geek podcast with an ever so slight Macintosh bias. Anyway, so you can see that we're able to web browse. It wasn't super speedy. And I've got a pretty wide uh, uh, website, so it's, I have to scan over to get to the, uh, to the sidebar. What I wanted to show you next was down here on the keyboard, we've got a brightness thing, just like on a regular laptop. But I want to look back at the, at the screen and watch how low I can actually go. That backlight is completely off. So this is going to use, like, no power at all, nothing at all. So uh, it really is readable, and uh, you can do a lot with just the backlight off. Next, I'd like to, to show you the Write program, which is essentially a word processor. You can see it coming up here. And uh, what I find interesting about this program is it does allow me to type and I can save documents by clicking on keep. But what I can't do is figure out where those documents are actually going. Um, one thing I wanted to show, if we can focus in on my fingers, is how close together my fingers actually have to be to touch the keys in the normal key position. I mean, they are touching, completely touching, and I don't have huge hands. But uh, anyway, so I can actually type. I can... Uh, type with this. Now, the one thing that's hard to do is the space bar is very hard to, to type on. So I can kind of do it. But I have figured out how to save these documents by saying uh, keep, and I can do all kinds of interesting font things, but for the life of me, I don't know where it's saving them. 
Next, I'd like to show you an application called Measure, and this is the weirdest thing. I'm gonna push a button here to bring this up. This is actually measuring our voices. Woo! I don't know why they have this in here, but you can log it, you can play around, you can make the amplitude a little more sensitive. Hello! Getting some square waves there. I don't know what this is for, but I think it's cool. Next, I wanna show you that this can actually play PDF files. I've got one loaded and ready. And uh, I'm actually pretty impressed with this thing. I can zoom this to width. And that's fairly readable, and I can scroll through it. So um, Frank had asked uh, whether it could do PDFs, and it certainly can. Now, it, I clicked on a PDF on the web, and it downloaded it. I kind of wish I could have read it online without saving it to the teeny little flash hard drive. But you can see that uh, you can do a bunch of little zoom zoom commands and play around with uh, looking at it closer in and that sort of thing. So very usable for PDF. So maybe you could use this as an ebook reader with the backlight off, last forever. So the last application I want to show you, there's like you can see, there's just a zillion of them here to play with, but I want to show you the record function because this one is very, very interesting. I've already got this uh, loaded up. Let's hit it. And you can see uh, our videographer Steve and me getting ready to take a picture. So I'm going to show you what the picture quality on this looks like. So you'll notice there's a video camera on this thing. $188 for this device and they've got a, a video camera in it right now. There we go. And let's take a look and see how our lovely picture looks. Pretty darn good, I'd say. How do we look, Steve? Not bad. <laughs> All right. But let's go really crazy here and let's show you what it looks like on video. Believe it or not, this has actually got video in it. So you can do video chat, but only between separate Exo laptops. It doesn't work with iChat or anything like that. So let's hit video here. And now we're recording a little video. It looks pretty good right now. It's only about, it'll only do 15 seconds of video. But let's take a look and see how this video looks. And it does take a little bit of time to save it, but uh, you're going to be really disappointed when you see what the video looks like. Believe it or not, this is the quality you get out of the video. Let's see, let's hit play. And there we go. <laughs> so you can see that the video quality isn't maybe anything to write home about. Pretty, uh, pretty bad. But you can do audio recordings and video and photos. So I guess I would say that this thing is a pretty amazing little device for uh, $188. Um, it's, it's pretty crazy. It does a lot of things. And uh, I think that it could be very interesting in the third world countries that it's intended for as long as people don't sit around saying, well, it doesn't do this, you know, it doesn't have a big hard drive and it doesn't have a nice graphics card and why would I ever want to buy that for here? It isn't for here, guys. This is for the third world countries. I think it's amazing for $188. If you'd like to see more reviews like this, go over to podfeet.com and check out the NoSilicast podcast. I'm Allison Sheridan, your host.